Well, hello there. Just giving a little update on everything here. I've been so busy, like just going through all of this stuff, just trying to get it cleaned up. I mean, there are so many things and I'm just doing my best to keep track of everything so I don't lose anything. And oh, it's it's been one hell of a past few weeks. I've just been so busy. And you know, I'm just trying to do everything I can to get everything prepped and ready to basically reassemble once I get the new cylinder head and short block. So that's more or less what I'm also doing in this video, just highlighting some of the more important and kind of fun prep steps. You'll see what I mean by that here later in the video. But I wanna go ahead and say, I really, really love this tool. This has been one of the most useful things I've bought from Harbor Freight and I've, I've used it so much. Like I just cleaned up all the timing components, which uh, remind me, I'm gonna show you something here on one of these guides in a second, but um, the VCT solenoids are all cleaned up. I mean, it got it looking almost brand new. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but man, it just does a great job. I've been using it with regular water out of my um, hose, which is well water and you know a little bit of degreaser and it's actually been working fine i don't see a real reason to have to use distilled water i understand why you would want to but i have to change out the water on that so much that i would go through five gallons of distilled water already because it gets the water so nasty because that's how well it cleans like i have a whole box full of parts here cleaned up i got the um cam phasers cleaned up that's the housing for the fuel pump parts of the oil pump fuel pumps all cleaned up uh water pump timing chains are here and the vacuum pump i mean look at this this almost looks new and it's just well, you know basically just from sitting in there cleaning and baking and whatnot and it's just it's been a really really useful tool and i still have a lot more to go in terms of cleaning, like I gotta take the throttle body apart and wanna dunk that in there while I can. And uh, probably, maybe, I don't know. And you know, some of the turbo bits, but I have really enjoyed this. I still think it's a bit on the high end on price, but it has done a great job. I kinda wish I had money for a larger one so I can fit larger parts and stuff. Like I have a whole fuel rail I would love to have put in there, but the only way I can clean it, just like the way I did these guides is you kind of have to do half and then half. But uh, yeah, anyways, guides. Remember I said I want to show you something with these guides. Okay, so remember part of the teardown video where I found that the timing chain was chewing into some of that silicone and everyone's like, oh, it's not a big deal. This is so stupid. <laughs> like, no, I'm sorry. That is a big deal. Even if that silicone never made its way into the pickup tube, it never made its way into the oil pump, it never made its way to any of the other oil passages, it made its way into other areas it shouldn't have been. And a lot of those areas could have been problematic. Here's an area where it should not be. This is the main guide. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to see if you can see it well. The GoPro doesn't focus in like a normal camera, so but you can see it, see it right there, right in front of my finger, that little smear. Well, that's not a smear, that's not a scuff. That is silicone that is on the timing chain guide. And it's also on the bottom here as well. And it should not be. And seeing how the timing chain was chewing into the silicone makes sense on how it got dragged onto the guides. So that is very concerning on the lack of care in precision when Ford is having these engines assembled in the first place. So that's that's just something I want to throw out there. It's amazing how much evidence I found on the teardown of this engine that shows that and proves that. In fact, had I known this, I mean, I know the internet has gone over this stuff before, but no one's really said anything about this. They're like, oh yeah, well, here's the chunks of metal, the rods out the block. Here's the damage, but no one's like, okay, well, let's closer look at how it is put together. And this is the first time seeing one of these two threes in all of its separate pieces. And honestly, with what I have seen on this engine, it is no wonder that these things fail so early. There's no quality in these at all from Ford. Like they're not bad when they are pieced together with the right components and the care and precision of 
independent builders or even people at home, but from Ford, there is zero care. It's just kind of like, we're gonna slap them together and just assume that a certain percentage of them are going to take a crap. And it's just <sighs> frustrating, especially when you're the one dealing with it. But this is actually the most important thing of this video. You're like, okay, what about the timing cover? What's so important about it? Well, not only do I have to get all of this old silicone off, which it's like, oh, the silicone. Why Ford chose to use so much silicone? Really hate the fact they didn't put a gasket here. To me, that's just the wrong way to cut costs because when you have to take all these apart, you have to apply the silicone and you have to <laughs> clean it up every time. Now I know generally this isn't a piece that is supposed to come off a lot. That rant aside, I have to get this cleaned up because I'm gonna make it look pretty. I got some of this right here. This is gonna make it look a lot nicer than it does because you know, it's just aluminum. You know, it's gotten nasty over time. You know, it's got oxidation on it and it just looks bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on there when I get it all cleaned up. This is like that wrinkled finish. So I'm hoping it looks like this when it's done. I love this look on the Mishimoto parts, the wrinkled black. So I would love that to match. So I've had this sitting here for a while some goo gone on it and uh, should soften up the silicone pretty good. So a lot of this I can just look, peel right on off. So that's not a big deal. You know, and just think like if this, if this wasn't a warranty repair, first of all, if it was a warranty repair, it was, it sucks for the technician because look how much time it takes to clean all of this off. No wonder if you're paying out of pocket to have any work done that has that requires the removal of this. Look how much, look how much you have to pay in labor hours because it takes so long to clean this up for, for before in reinstallation. It's so stupid. Who does this benefit? Not the consumer, not at all. God, I've only been working at this for like, not even a minute, a couple minutes maybe, and I've already broke through these gloves. These were the only thing I could afford at the time. Like, I'm glad I have them. They're still nice, but they're like only good if you're not doing anything with them. Like just for picking stuff up or whatever. But the moment you go to work in these gloves, ugh, they just rip open. I mean, I swear you could cut these things on a blade of grass. Okay, so I finally got that timing cover cleaned up. It was a pain. First and foremost, Goo Gone, yeah, it, it, it's not good enough. So Goo Gone is gone, no, no, no more. That's not what you use. Instead, you use this stuff right here. I've used this before, especially to remove silicone. It's a little expensive, like 15 bucks at Wally World, but this stuff will dissolve the silicone like crazy. I mean, this stuff will remove the stink off a dead body. It is really, really powerful stuff for removing any type of adhesive or silicone or anything like that. So. Between that and these, uh, when I was at Walmart, because I needed to get this, when I realized this wasn't good enough, I stumbled across these, because I needed more razor blades. These are plastic um, scraping blades, which was perfect, because I didn't want to use a razor blade and you know gouge up the metal and whatnot. So, like, uh, what are these? I got the... Um, right here, Hyper Tough plastic scraper blades and they're like a dollar something. So like, you know, I got a whole pack of them and I got all that silicone off, no problem. So now, now it's time to apply the wrinkled finish. So that's what we're gonna go do. Now I've already hit it with a base coat of just the flat black that I had laying around just to give this something a little bit to attach to, um, which is also a high temp paint. But this is really gonna give it a nice unique look you gotta spray it five minutes apart and you gotta do a crisscross pattern. So you spray it one way, then five minutes, spray it another way, then five minutes you spray diagonally. So, and then you gotta let it set for two hours and you should get a wrinkle finish. So we'll go ahead and apply this and see how it looks. Okay, let's wait five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones and then we'll take a look at it once it dries, see if it's got that nice wrinkled look. Coming at you a whole day after spraying the timing cover with that paint and um, 
wow, I'm actually really surprised at how well this came out. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Bam, look at that. It's crazy how well it textured like this. I don't even understand how it works, but it works and it works well. The only part that was a little weird was up here. It's like flat. It didn't texture here and here. I don't know why that is, but everywhere else, it just looks so good. It, it definitely looks so much like the Mishimoto pipes. That's what I was going for. This looks really good. I just gotta take the tape off here. It's gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning up here and there, but it looks pretty dang good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Looking snazzy. Yeah, that that looks really good. Here, let me bring it out into the light so you can get a better look at it. Look at that. That looks so good. Wow. I'm just so blown away at how this paint textures itself like this. So once I get some of these surfaces cleaned up, like here, there, yeah, up here is pretty good. <clears throat> this will be ready to go on the new engine once it comes in, which hopefully should be very soon. In fact, today was supposed to be the delivery day. I don't know if it's really coming today, but that's all I do now. But of course, when that comes in, I'm only going to be waiting on a few more extra parts, but we can start slowly piecing everything together. It's going to look so good with that piece painted, it. And I'm going to go in and paint a few more pieces with an accent color. So it's going to look pretty damn good when it's all put back together. It's going to be a real nice piece all setting on the new engine going back in the car. The extra work was definitely worth it. I think it's gonna look really, really good. I can't wait to get it all together and see what it looks like. It's going to look amazing, I'm telling you. But I think that's gonna finally wrap it up here for this video. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next Cars Created video.